This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're now going to go through and look at how to calculate another key balance, uh, having already calculated group retained earnings, non-controlling interest. We're now going to move on and calculate your goodwill. Uh, goodwill appears as a non-current asset within the group statement of financial position. It is also an intangible non-current asset. And we need to be able to go through there and look at how to calculate it. And essentially, why does it arise in the first place? So what you've got is when you go through and acquire a subsidiary, you pay a particular amount to get your percentage ownership. Uh, the non-controlling interest own their percentage ownership. So essentially, what you can find there is the true worth of the subsidiary. So what you have paid to get, say, your 80% and what the NCI own as their 20%. And that gives you the full worth of the subsidiary. If you then compare that to the net assets of the subsidiary, you will see that what you have paid and what the NCI own is actually worth more than the value of the subsidiary based upon the value of its net assets. And the difference between the two, the reason why we then pay more is referred to as the, the goodwill. And that goodwill, as we said, it is an intangible asset and relates to things such as customer loyalty. So you would be prepared to pay more or the business would be worth more, wouldn't it? If we had some very loyal customers that, that gave us repeat business every single year. Likewise, if you have a good reputation, you know, that would again go through and enhance the overall value of the subsidiary, but would not be reflected, would it, within the net assets of the subsidiary? OK, so we need to, to assign a value and we do on consolidation by calculating the goodwill. The goodwill is essentially looking at the true worth of the subsidiary compared to the value of its net assets. It's intangible because it's not something there that we can physically go through and touch. And also as well, it, it's a, uh, an asset because it generates you benefit. It's a non-current asset because it generates you benefit for a prolonged period of time, doesn't it? Or at least you hope it would, providing you don't upset your customers and damage your reputation. Okay. So what we're going to go through and do is we're going to go through and calculate the goodwill. OK, uh, and the key bit when it comes to valuing the goodwill, like we've said, we look at the amount that you pay to get your percentage ownership. We look at what the NCI is worth and compare that to the net assets. And the issue that you have is what the non-controlling interest is worth. How do we go through and calculate that NCI on the date of acquisition? Because we've already seen in the, in the previous video that there are, are two ways, aren't there, to be able to go through and to calculate the NCI. There is the proportionate share of net assets method and then that fair value method, isn't there? So let, let's use that knowledge and bring it into the example because it does want us, no surprise, to calculate goodwill. Uh, it does want us to work out the goodwill at acquisition as that is when it arises and that is when you go through therefore and calculate it. And it wants us to work it out based on the NCI being, first of all, on your proportionate share. And then second of all, based upon your fair value method. OK, what you will see is because we value the NCI differently under each scenario, we end up with a different value of goodwill. But we will then go through and explain why that goodwill is different and how that then ensures that, that things do still balance when it comes to the consolidated statement of financial position. So if you grab yourselves a separate page of paper, uh, if you go through there and head it up, goodwill, okay, split your page into three columns. Uh, on the left-hand column, we're going to look at the first bit being your proportionate share of net assets method to, to value the NCI. Leave the next column blank before we then look at the fair value method of valuing the NCI and calculating goodwill. So what we're going to go through and do is we're going to look at the cost, see the amount that, that, that you have paid. Uh, and then you're going to work out the entire value of the subsidiary by adding on the non-controlling interest at the date of acquisition. Okay, and by, by doing that, you, you work out the, the entire worth of the sub. You then go through there and deduct what you believe the subsidiary is worth based upon the financial statement. So you look at the net assets at acquisition. 
within this example, what have we got? Uh, it goes through there and says that the parent buys 75% of the equity shares. So what we've got there is that the cost relates, is it to our 75% holding? The NCI that we're looking to value must be in relation to a 25% holding. And hopefully now you can see why we add those together. So that when we look at the worth of the subsidiary based upon the, the net assets, we take that 100 and the 200s, if you like, match up, don't we? We've got the full 100 worth of the subsidiary based on what we've paid and how we value the NCI compared to the net assets of that subsidiary. OK, uh, taking some of the numbers, uh, we're told that we paid 156. We're told that the net assets were there as 170,000. So there under both scenarios, the cost that we have is 100 and 56,000. The net assets under both situations are 170,000. There we go. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you value the NCI, those figures are the same. What we paid and what the net assets are worth. The, 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 the big issue now is talking about the non-controlling interest, okay? Uh, because in the first bit, it's based upon your proportionate share of net assets. So here, what we've got is the NCI share of the net assets is 25%. 25% of those net assets. Well, if the net assets are worth 170, 25% uh, of 170, I think, Gives me 42,500. Okay, let's just go through there and have a quick check, shall we? 170,000 times 25%, yeah, jackpot. 42,500. Okay, uh, when you total that up, I think you end up, is it with 28,500 as your goodwill? Okay, excellent. Everyone happy with that? Yeah, nice and simple, straightforward calculation, I think. Uh, the NCI acquisition based upon fair value, just be aware we weren't asked to calculate it. It was given to us. The remaining shares, i.e. the 25%, are valued at 56,000. So if I put in 56,000 there, does that give me then, is it 42,000 dollars? Okay, so the goodwill figure under the fair value method is 42. Under the proportionate share of net assets is 28,500. And as you can see, they are different, aren't they? Okay. Uh, so, so what's all that about? What, what, why, why the difference? Well, the difference, ultimately, it is this, isn't it? Here, we valued the NCI at 42,500. Here, we valued the NCI, was it there, at 56,000. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a, a nice little trick that hopefully brings everything together. Because when you go through there and look at this 42,000, we refer to this 42,000, as we will see, as your full goodwill. OK, now, now what do we mean by the full goodwill? Well, let's explain. Let's just take the $42,000. OK, let's just move that more into the centre of my page. Because that 42,000 represents not just the controlling interests goodwill, so our 75% ownership, but it also represents the non controlling interests 25%. Okay. And what I'll do is I will show how we calculate it and I will show how the magic then ties it into the, the goodwill calculated under the proportionate share of net assets. So what you've got is goodwill in its simplest way is looking at what we paid compared to what we've got. OK, so what we've got essentially is our share of the net assets. So here, 75% of 170,000 and for the NCI, that's 25%. Of 170,000. 
So 75% of 170,000, uh, does that go through there and give me, is it 127, 500? And then the non-controlling interest, they've got 42,500, okay. That's what they owe, isn't it? Okay. In terms of what we paid, uh, I think we went through and paid as the parent, didn't we? Was it the one hundred and fifty-six thousand? So the parents paid one hundred and fifty-six thousand. The non-controlling interest hasn't physically paid anything because they already own their twenty-five percent of shares, but. The amount that it's worth it is 56,000 isn't it okay so where are we headed next well what we're going to show is the goodwill the goodwill that belongs to the parent the goodwill that belongs to non-controlling interest if we look at the nci first we can see there that the nci's goodwill is worth 13,500 so of that 42 13,500 belong to the non-controlling interest the rest should, if it works, belong to the parents, and it does. So if you see that uh, the controlling interest goodwill, the 156, that's the 127,500, that gives me 28,500. And effectively, that 28,500 we refer to, is it as the controlling interest goodwill? or if you like, the parent's goodwill. That's what the parent owns of that goodwill. Here, the 13,500 is the non-controlling interest share. And what I think is magic about it is one, it totals up to 42,000, but two, if you look here at the 28,500, have we seen that number already? We have, yeah, so here, the 28,500, the goodwill that we calculated under the proportionate share of net assets method, that just relates to the parent's goodwill only. And that's sometimes referred to as the partial goodwill method. So we have the partial goodwill method, whereby we work out the goodwill based upon NCI valued at a proportionate share of the net assets. And the full goodwill is whereby you work out the NCI based upon the fair value of the NCI. And that full goodwill not only gives you, is it the parent's goodwill, but also shows you the non-controlling interest on top of that as well. So the NCI goodwill as well. Don't worry, don't panic. You don't need to be able to show the split. Okay, You don't need to take the goodwill that you have in full of 42,000 and go through there and say, well, look, this is what the controlling interest own. This is what the NCI own. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is be able to calculate the goodwill, whether that's the goodwill as partial goodwill. So using your proportionate share of net assets method to value the NCI, or whether it's calculating the full goodwill, uh, which uses the fair value method to value the NCI. You just need to be comfortable with both. OK, don't worry about any fancy or funky split like we've just gone through and done there. OK, if the question asks you to calculate goodwill, calculate the goodwill by looking at the cost. Add on the non-controlling interest. Read the question to see whether the NCI is based upon the fair value or the proportionate share of net assets and then deduct the net asset at acquisition. OK, there you go. Rework the question. Make sure you're happy with it. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll start to look at other bits and pieces that may help you with the goodwill, with the NCI and the group retained earnings as we begin to look at some standardised workings next.